rabbit cat. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze on a far flung holiday, come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Relaxing with a drink at 30,000 feet is one of the more enjoyable ways of passing the time. But there's one golden rule. Stay off the booze until the plane is off the ground. At Luton departures, a stag party is being watched by security. What security? Yes, we are now about to leave Transdam. Thank you very much. Well, now, and now we've been warned, if we don't behave ourselves, we can't go on the plane. You are sensible words, you but are. when you've had a drink, fate has a way of conspiring against you. <laughs> the plane's ready, but Mike Couts, a builder from Cambridge, has lost his boarding card. What happened? Right, watch this. I was number 20. Where do I go to get on the plane? I'm now trying to get on the plane without a boarding card. Do you have any idea where it is? No. I'm right. It doesn't help when your mates don't want to listen. No, of course they're all quiet now. All quiet. It's all quiet. Some people obviously ain't nice drunks like us. I am a nice drunk, but I haven't got the voice. Right. No, we're all nice drunks. They have obviously experienced nasty drunks. So let's be drunk and quiet. Drunk and used to do a piss. Can we get on there? But I haven't got the boarding guard. You have got a problem there. <laughs> I thought so. I thought, oh, you, just for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. Did you leave it though? Oh, well, must be on the table. Well, get it sorted, mate. Oh, this now, is serious stuff now. On, on the plane, all nice. Land the other side and let's get on. <laughs> Put on that high love clown. There you go. Thank you. Now go through. OK? Mike gets a fresh boarding card. Now all he has to do is look sober for a few more minutes. I love Karen. Also under the spotlight today is Darren Wallace. The former air dispatcher is making his first flight as a cabin steward. And he doesn't miss the old job one little bit. I must be joking. It's raining, filthy weather. <laughs> no, I don't miss it at all. I miss the, the, the lads working with them, but no, apart from that, no. I prefer to be in the warm. First off, the safety demo. When the mask appears, remain seated and pull the mask sharply down to start the flow of oxygen. Please adjust your mouth and nose, securing it with your mask band and running the mask. God, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> no, I'm okay at the moment. Purser Louise Bingley's on hand to help him through the first drinks run. I think that's well whipped. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any hassle-free passengers yet? Only one. <laughs> that? that was a lady there, she said, she was talking about peanuts. She said yesterday they were 50 pence. And I went, well, um, today they're 60. <laughs> I said, I don't know where I went on the, uh, yesterday's flight, but today they're 60. And uh, the other gentleman next to her sorted, sorted her out for me and all so it's quite good. It's good when they back you up, isn't it? That's it, yeah, it's good if the passengers back you up, so, yeah. <laughs> Mike Couts, meanwhile, is almost home and dry if he can just look sensible between here and the plane. Silly walks are not a good idea. Yeah. Nor is trying to kiss the female air dispatcher right underneath the captain's window. <laughs> but he might still make it if he can just walk up the steps without looking a complete idiot. <laughs> Two minutes later, first the bag, then the man are offloaded. He didn't make the steps very well. Um, we had a good idea that the crew at that point weren't going to um, let him on. Apparently he was making a lot of noise. 
was shouting, being a bit abusive, um, which obviously we can't allow. It can be a danger to passengers on board. The crew won't accept that, and it will be the pilots. He'll have the final decision whether to take the passenger or not. And in this case, it wasn't um, decided to offload him. Mike isn't going to Amsterdam, but it doesn't look as if it's quite sunk in. It's two weeks since check-in girl Katrina Leader got married to Julian Batham, a wedding she brought forward after she was diagnosed as having renal cancer. The chemotherapy treatment has its side effects. Today, she has to cut her much-loved hair, and her mum, Pauline, has come along for support. OK. So, we'll get you washed, and once we've done that, we'll start shopping. But I'll cut... She hasn't had it cut since she was first diagnosed with cancer seven years ago. Sure, I should have it cut. Are you sure I should have it cut? It'll grow again. It's going to look fabulous. You'll look gorgeous, and your husband will think you look gorgeous too. Has he ever seen you with short hair? Oh, I think you're stunning. At the moment, I have a lot of bitterness, upset, distraught, and God knows what inside me. I can't, I can't take it all in, and I can't understand how comes I've got this again, you know. But that's life, and I have, and I've got to carry on. I need an envelope, please. Okay, there. Isn't that falling out? She's really, really upset. And it's, you feel so bad because you're cutting all her hair off and she doesn't want it cut. So you feel like you're making her upset. And I, you know, I know I've done it before for other patients. So we know what she's going through. It's just, anyway, she's going to look stunning and she'll love it. Look, here we are. Here's every single Meg Ryan haircut going. At Luton Airport, Katrina's colleagues still have their hands full. Mike Couts has just woken up to the fact that he's not going to Amsterdam. I do, not time, think, I do not think that I am drunk enough. It's actually illegal to be on board an aircraft. It is We can actually offload you. And not they, we, have, we have no obligation. Uh, allow you to travel at all. Oh, I know we have no I obligation to travel. I know I'll allow but I don't think that if I get married tomorrow, and I don't think that I, I am to too drunk to travel. You are today. Anyway, do you want to travel tomorrow morning? Have you made that decision? <laughs> I'll be at Amsterdam tonight. Well, you can't tonight. The flight's gone oh, now. Oh, there isn't what enough do you mean I can't? The flight's gone now. What so. do you mean I can't? Well, not with easy yet, anyway. No. Oh, okay. Exactly. Not with easy yet, I can't. But I can with the proper firm. A firm that it's will actually... Yeah. Yeah. And I will walk on that plane. Well, that's up to you, that's fine. Are you the only pet okay. airport in the country? Not, 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 not to Luton. No, I need a decision. So, well, we do you want to, to go on to tomorrow morning's flight? No, I want to go tonight. I'm going to Amsterdam tonight. Well, you have to make your own arrangements. Can I have a little No. Do you want to fly out with another carrier? You're more than welcome to go around the corner for travel agents to uh, book out of another airport. That's not fair, mate. You're f***ing If these weren't here, you wouldn't have done this. And that's what guts me. These weren't here, you wouldn't have done this. Here, so These, you wouldn't have now. Swear one more time that you're not going on board any of the aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to eat time. I'm going to go around, Stan. I'm going to eat right. Get me there. Shame. They're all having a good time now, and he's on his way to Heathrow. <laughs> Just to be offloaded another one, I imagine. Because <laughs> I'm sure he won't get accepted there. But whether it's by plane, train or taxi, Mike Couts is determined to get to Amsterdam.
45 minutes on, and Katrina's haircut is beginning to take shape. Oh, I think it'll look all right, though. It doesn't look... I mean, naturally, you're always fairer around the front anyway. I am, because I always wear it back. Yeah, because the sun gets, gets to it, yeah. <laughs> do what you think. That's coming in there. Really if you want to, do what you think. <laughs> what? One bit of this as well. <laughs> this is for Julia. At Liverpool Airport, dispatcher Kevin Reardon thinks he may have spotted a celebrity passenger. You know what? That's somewhere. It's gone into the arrivals hall. Yeah. Sting. Sting, the pop singer. We caught up with the pop star in Arrivals. The air dispatcher thought you were Sting. Um, so clearly you're not. Do you think Sting will be oh, travelling okay. easy jet? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I, think, um, I think he'll be on Concord. What I tend to do, apart from doing my own work, which always comes first, of course, well, I do have a look to see if we've got any celebs coming off the aircraft. I often take a look. I stand this side of the aircraft, looking at the looking at the doors, waiting for people to come off, and quite often you, you do suit people. Kevin thought that was Sting. No, it's Sting. He's off his head, Kevin. <laughs> looks a bit like him, you think? No way. But Kevin has more serious thoughts on his mind today. He's hoping for a pay rise. I'm not really one for status. That doesn't mean a lot to me. What means more to me, I think, uh, we get down to the integrity, is the cash, the money. Supporting my family, that's what means more to me there, I think. But more cash is down to his boss, Andy Redmond. And Andy is not convinced Kevin has his mind fully on the job. Flying time down there today, Dave? Two hours? Is size per? Oh, 1.45. Uh, 1.45? OK, so you're going to be late to coming back then, guys? Well... What he should be doing is going to the crew, getting the relevant paperwork off them, giving them the relevant paperwork, passing on the figures, etc. Be polite for X amount of time, but don't waste your time in there and that's in a way. So they've got a job to do and they've only got a short space of time to do it. Get out of there, get on with it. You can't believe I got my tan locally, he's just saying. He said, I don't believe you got that tan in Liverpool. I said, I didn't, I got it in Ormskirt. Give us a wave, mate. He doesn't know it yet, but Kevin's career in airlines is about to hit some turbulence. I can never choose out of these two. What one do you think's best? Oh, well. Katrina Leader is spending a night in hospital to prepare for a scan on her cancer. It's only five days since the haircut, but the chemotherapy treatment has taken its toll. And you gotta have that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, grow back. But the problem was, because it was, nice, it was a nice style, but then when it started coming out in clumps, and it was coming out in little clumps and tufties, it was just, well, it was so noticeable. You know, I was all patchy, weren't I? Funny thing is, though, where I used to wear my hair for work, I used to have it pulled down into a little bun. And I've got a suntan in my head. Can you see where I'm a partner bit? <laughs> and Julian didn't cause me gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> or gremlin. Gremlin chop. <laughs> It takes a bit of getting used to, because obviously Katrina had long hair. Um, so it's happened pretty quick that, that she's down to hardly any now. Um, but she still looks that, that cheeky little face. Mm. She gets aware of it. Back at Liverpool Airport, the final bags are being loaded onto EasyJet's flight to Nice. Experienced! The flight's on time, but Kevin may be in trouble. A bag is being screened at the last minute for security. It could still make the flight, but Kevin's decided to consult the captain, and the captain has refused to take it. The result? A passenger flies without his luggage, and Kevin's boss is furious. So that's obviously someone's delayed getting their baggage because of that. Yeah. Well, it could have been, it could have been screened twice, as it should be, and gone, actually gone on the aircraft. Yeah, well, I have to ask the captain to take another bag. I took what he had on his load sheet, yeah? So it's coming. Yeah, but you're asked to, didn't you? Well, I, I always do ask them, don't just tell them. I say, is it OK, will you accept this bag? I said, well, you're going to cut it up. There's 140 other bags, are you going to accept these or not? Well, it's an extra bag that hasn't been screened at the time. But it would have been. That's just, that's just, you know, words. 
And if you, what you're going to have to clarify here, the next time it happens, you can automatically presume that these people are screening it because that's what their instructions are, and ins instruct the captain that it has been screened, mm -hmm. and then he's got, he's got no real reason not to take not it. to take it, and there's no real reason the passengers should be put out any, any longer than necessary. Mm -hmm. So, lesson to be learned. I kind of took the rap for that, which I wasn't too happy about, because ultimately it's the captain's decision whether or not an extra piece of baggage goes on the aircraft. If you, if you ask the pilot permission, that's generally when you're trying to pass the book because it's, the time has gone too far. You know, you, you're actually putting the onus on them so that if it does go later, well, the captain said. Now, most crews are, are, are aware of this, and when you ask them something, they'll say no. It's not the end of the world, is it? It's a big world out there, and there's lots of... Uh... Lots of employers. If I'm not good enough, perhaps uh, I'll have to seek further pastures. Who knows? That's not my decision to make, really, at the moment. <laughs> it's now Friday evening, and the end of a shift for many of the EasyJet cabin crew. But for Purser Louise Bingley, the night is far from over. She's about to pick up a plane load of Everton fans, and just to make things interesting, a couple of stag parties are along for the ride. He's a virgin. Virgin. Virgin, virgin Voyager. He's oh, not wants to dance to lose his cherries. <laughs> We've got a few drinks. They're a little bit noisy, but they'll behave themselves. Are, you, are they going to get yeah. on the plane, are they? Yeah. No problems. They can all, they're all stood up. They can still walk, so uh, we'll get on. They're all right. We're used to This is like normal for a Friday night, and uh, they do behave themselves. And if they start getting a bit out of hand, then we'll just shout at them, and we'll go, oh, all right, then. Mike Couts, you may remember, didn't behave himself and was thrown off the plane. Five days later, we caught up with him at the pub. Easy, easy in, easy out. <laughs> in fact, Mike did make it to Amsterdam the same night by flying out of Heathrow for an extra cost of £120. So, any regrets? Well, I was really I was a tad annoyed because I, I can't believe why I didn't get loud. Oh, man, a <laughs> Get out! Bad up! Apparently not. Back at Liverpool, it seems, the drinkers know the score. Or at least, they think they do. Pass the tape around your waist and tie on the left-hand side like this. Can you flake, pull the red toggle sharply downwards. This should not be done until outside the aircraft as it would reach with your exit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a serious part of the flight. I would ask for your full attention, or otherwise I'll have to turn the aircraft back and we won't be going anywhere. Thank you. Oh, just get me cool. The plane isn't moving until everyone's quiet. <laughs> Obviously, they're going to be out for a good time and everything, but there are other passengers we have to think about. And they were singing and they were using words that are really not very pleasant to a lot of the passengers on board. So I just inform the performer first that. Um, asked him if either he was going to have a word or if he wanted me to have a word, but he said he might try and get the captain just to speak to them. So far, so good. Just one problem, everyone's been drinking and the toilet at the back is broken. <laughs> EasyJet Flight 801 is going to be a lively ride. <laughs> For Kevin Reardon, it's the end of a miserable day. A career in aviation is starting to lose its appeal. You know, you, you can get better pay doing other things, but I do happen to enjoy this sort of job. I think that counts for quite a lot, enjoying the job. I enjoy the environment, I enjoy the, the atmosphere, the buzz, and what goes on. The only thing that bothers me, that, that scares me about it, really, I, I can't, I don't think there's a lot of potential at Liverpool for me. I wish there was, I wish I could say there was a good chance of promotion and prospects there, but. It doesn't, that doesn't appear to be happening, really, because of the scale it's on and, and the, uh, the movements they've got in and out of there, really. Otherwise, I'm sure I'd give it my best shot. I've got to go where's best for me and my family, of course. Back on flight 801, the party is well underway. <laughs> Good job. 
But the broken loose seat is starting to cause a problem. Yeah, so we're just trying to get that sorted out, but they seem to have calmed down now. With half the plane joining the queue, holding on may not be an option. It's Louise Bingley to the rescue. There's a massive queue down the front and it's getting a bit, we can't move down there, so we thought we'll just open the bag. What's missing is the toilet seat, so we'll just let the gentleman go there and we'll be all right. For the cabin staff and passengers, it's relief. All round. You are beautiful, Louise. No, Louise! You are. Louise, you really are. You're beautiful. Okay, Louise, you're beautiful. Okay, you're beautiful. You Will you marry me? No, I can't. No, you've gone just too far. You've killed it all. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> On airline next week, Jane's missing passengers, uh, the missing are, luggage. Not only that, they've lost my bag. And Katrina finds out about her future. But you wouldn't really know, would you, apart from that tag? <laughs> <laughs>